Hey, welcome back. Nigeria's national grid has collapsed again, causing widespread blackouts across the country, marking the eighth grid failure in 2024. In fact, some people say it's 10. The Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, reported that recent infrastructure issues, including a fire at the Jeba Transmission Station, contributed to repeated outages. Between 2020 and 2024, Nigeria saw 20 grid collapses, a 76.47% reduction compared to 85 collapses from 2015 to 2019, according to TCN's Ndidimba. Power Minister Adebayo Adelabu attributed ongoing grid failures to outdated infrastructure, with the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, raising concerns about the impact on recent improvements in grid stability. Our guest this morning is Dr. Idowu Oyebanjo, MD, Itfon Power Engineering Consultants uh, Limited. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning and uh, good morning to our viewers, listeners worldwide. So, our grid has collapsed again. Power grid has collapsed again. Like uh, I said, some people even say it's 10 times, but officially we are being told that it's 8 times in one year almost like once every month our grid has been collapsing and the minister is attributing this uh, or blaming it on old infrastructure and all that would like you to uh, give us your take on what is happening to our grid is that is it is the old infrastructure the only excuse that can be given for this is there no way out yeah, a very important uh, reason for grid collapse uh, is aging equipment. So in that respect, you have uh, uh, one of the factors. But there are several other factors. So when you have old equipment, so aging infrastructure, then you, you replace them. It requires money for replacement. But you have to also replace the equipment in the correct places, which means they will not be politically motivated, which means there will not be projects that will be at the backyard of the people who are the corridors of power. Essentially, they will be based on power system studies. Power system studies are the only veritable way of uh, implementing power system projects. Or the situation where people just put substations, transformers, or build lines in places where you don't have demand can lead to good collapse. But several other things can also. One of them, like the one that happened yesterday, yesterday in the afternoon at about two, two o'clock, it will be because of protection coordination. The lack of protection, what we call protection coordination in the Nigerian power system is, is bizarre and is a major cause of grid collapse. And if that is not attended to, even when you put in new infrastructure, nothing will happen. The grid will keep collapse. Thirdly, the grid you have we have in Nigeria is very fragile and weak and is susceptible to failure because the amount of generation we have though not enough for a population of over 200 million people as not the normally put in. Uh, you have transmission and distribution capacities that are far lower than what it, they can generate. So this kind of system where you have 13,000 installed generation capacity and the transmission can only do about 5,500. And distribution for various reasons, including energy theft, and uh, commerciality can only take 3,500 megawatts is, uh, is a misnomer. This misalignment of capacities is one of the reasons why you continue to have great collapse in Nigeria. Okay. Uh, Another reason. Yeah. Okay, go, on. Go, on, go on, go on. Uh, uh, last reason. Another reason is the lack of investment in gas to power initiatives. So predominantly, our source of fuel in Nigeria is gas. We have hydro, but over 80% of our portfolio of energy is gas. So this means that, and we are rich in gas, 
So, but there is no investment to take this fuel from the ground up to the power stations. So, we will have significant investments to be made in the gas to power value chain. But when you make this investment, you must make it end to end. End to end in the sense that there is no point doing infrastructural revamp in the gas end while not taking care of the transmission network and the distribution network. So here are some of the reasons that uh, uh, we have for grid collab. There are a few more. SCADA. SCADA means supervisory control and data acquisition. So a system that's supposed to look at the entire uh, network on your computer screen and initiate controls and initiate commands to 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 remove a part of the system that is not working right that will not that will prevent the entire grid to be uh, to collapse is not there so they can't see quickly what's happening in one part of the country that is out of line so that they can isolate that part so that it doesn't destroy the rest and what do you do you decentralize the electricity act uh, signed by law into law by the president last year already makes it possible for states to generate uh, transmit and distribute the electricity to their citizens but not many states have taken it on board the country needs renewable energy systems through this decentralization and also uh, other initiatives let me stop there for a while okay well let's let's take them one after the other beginning from uh, protection what did you mean when you talked about uh, protection of this uh, facility and all that okay so there are two things protection of facilities uh, looking at the issue from the angle of uh, uh, vandalization mm. so if you have your substations and lines susceptible to vandalization by miscreants or bandits or others then your your power system will always collapse but there is actually a function called protection in 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 power systems yeah that is with relays okay and circuit breakers and equipment that operates if there is a fault in one part so if there is a fault in one part of the system so if you think about it as a grid a, an interconnected grid once there is a fault in one part if you don't take out that fault arising from that part quickly it will affect all the other parts then they will go down together then the grid will collapse but if you can easily isolate by means of what we call protection system if you can easily isolate that faulty part and quickly enough the other part will never feel the impact now it is it is the number of protection system on this uh, on the power system in Nigeria uh, that are not uh, correctly set or inaccurately uh, position. Okay. So, except this is done, we we'll continue to have great collapse. Okay. The way to minimize it is the decentralization. So, it's like having a circuit breaker of some sort that we have in our homes, but in a greater scale right now, and then uh, to protect some some other uh, parts from getting uh, the problems of a part that could have been isolated. That's what it yes. is. But coming to the yes. physical protection now. Um, is it out of place for these uh, uh, installations to have particular sets of people who are, who are protecting them or guarding them or whatever? Because most times we just find that these discos come to the communities and say, take ownership of this thing, and that is the end. Nothing else is being done, and they are expecting the community that has this installation in their, in their locality to be the ones that will watch over these things. Is that what is obtainable everywhere else? Oh, not at all, but that's part of it. Uh, citizens are happy to be on guard uh, because electricity is also the as when it's available. Mm -hmm. But actually, the, the world has moved on from such things. We have drones and other technologies that would prevent anyone coming near uh, the equipment. And even if they are near, so far away, they will be spotted and uh, they, they will be, I mean, uh, disarmed or disallowed from getting close to the uh, 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 the equipment. So it is left for implementation of all these suggestions. Solutions have been offered. There are so many remote 
systems, even drones um, that, that can be used to patrol uh, and also sense people coming around and uh, make sure that they are not there uh, to cause us this kind of physical protection. But the network protection devices that I've told you about is a critical factor. Yeah. Okay, what about the transmission that you talked about? The capacity is up to about 13,000 or so that you mentioned, but we're only able to transmit about 3,005 to 5,500. Uh, what, what are the challenges? Why is it that we have a, a bigger capacity, but we're not able to distribute or transmit more than 5,005? Is it so, such a difficult thing to, uh, to have the infrastructure that will enable us to do the transmission to full capacity? Absolutely not. If you think about it, electricity uh, technology uh, is now over 124 years old. And even if Nigeria is crawling or does not know how to do anything, they would have achieved this technology. Nigeria currently is operating at the 19. 20s UK, 1920s American system. We are still far behind. So it's lack of investment on the one side. It's lack of meritocracy on the other. You cannot get a functional power system where there is lack of meritocracy. It's as simple as that. You want a power system like China's, you want a power system like the uh, USA's, like the UK's or the continental Europe, you must put meritocracy. You must allow people who are thoroughly bred in the subject to lead the subject. Otherwise, you will not know what to do. You will not know about the technologies that are developed and are available for you to use at the right time. And when people confuse you, you will not know. The people who are in the business can easily confuse you. People can go and put investments in the wrong place. They will just tell you that that is the correct place, but you don't know about it. So you will have to put meritocracy in front of every other thing, in front of a uh, quota system, if you really want to address the issue of power system misalignment. That's one. This costs money. That's another thing. But the money, when given to you by World Bank or other donors, or you borrow them by loan, what are you doing? Are you investing them correctly? Are you investing them in places where you can have a return on investment or are you just investing them wrongly wrongly in the sense that you go and put them in places where they cannot even pay back what about your industrial zones why don't you give electricity directly to them so that the cost of manufacturing is cheaper they become competitive your economy will grow it's a whole lot it's a whole lot it's a whole lot meritocracy pragmatism and honesty is key uh, in getting a power system that is functional. Is that also the reason why we cannot uh, optimally use our gas reserves to, to, power the, uh, to power the sector as you were talking about? Because we have like the highest gas reserve in at least Africa and we're still having problems. Why do you think that is? Or are they the same problems like the ones you mentioned? Yeah, it's exactly the same problem. So um to have a power system that is functional meritocracy is key like i've said before lack of investment over the years and lack of right investment because we've been hearing about a lot of money spent on 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 various infrastructure the rare development programs in nigeria but if these things, if these investments have not been put in the right places, it amounts to not. And I guess that's what we have had over the last 40 uh, or so years. Hmm. Okay, so you talked about uh, decentralization as well. Um, there was a reason why uh, there was no decentralization before now. Uh, the, the federal government wanted it to maybe uh, make it easier for individuals of, yes, for citizens to have access to electricity. So when, when it is decentralized, according to the new law that, that came up that you mentioned in the previous administration, 
how, how available do you think this electricity will be and how easy will it be for the federating units uh, to be able to get the infrastructure in place? All right, that's a very, very good question. Um, it's going to be as easy as it is for the United Kingdom, United States of America, China, and Co. if meritocracy is put in the forefront of whatever the state wants to do. It's going to be as difficult, cumbersome, complex, disgraceful, shameful as what we have today with many grid collapses in all the states if they do it with lack of meritocracy. This most singular important thing for them, for the states, which I beg is for them to apply meritocracy. So if you put the wrong people at the end of your affairs who do not understand the technical and commercial and financial aspects of power system planning, operation, management, you will regret it. You will always have great collapse in that state. So it's as simple as that. Do it right. Make sure you use power systems, thoroughly bred power systems engineers as people who are in your your regulatory commission so the states will establish the regulatory commission let them have highly technically qualified people who have worked in power systems you have a lot of members of the chartered institute of power engineering uh, power engineers in nigeria Saipen. they are well trained they have experience in power systems let them lead the base you have all projects in your state let them be undertaken via power system planning. You know, I told you about power system studies earlier, mm. that they should be the basis for any project in power system implementation. That's not been the case so far uh, for, for many years. But if all the states, any state decentralizes, I mean, takes advantage of the decentralization which you talked about, they must do things properly. They must employ the high quality people to handle the process right from the beginning top regulation through the participants. So, for example, you make an application, you put an advert out for people who want to invest in your network. Equity State has just put out advert for very lovely ones, uh, distribution, transmission and generation and co. And metering. If you select the wrong people who don't have the experience, who don't have the capacity, because they have bribed their way in, they are going to be nonsense. They will not be able to operate the network. You will still have darkness. Hmm. But now, what, 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 what will be in it for the people? Because uh, it seems as if they may not, people may not have alternatives, like uh, there will be a monopoly. The state says this is what is happening, and that agency does what it likes. Uh, so what will be the alternatives to the people? How much competition will be in that sector when it is decentralized? When it is fully decentralized, there will be so much competition. In the states, to start with, the consumers will eventually move off the grid. As you, can, as you know, many people are going off the grid. Right now, they are using grid as backup, and then their solar uh, systems at home will now be their main source of supply. And people are happy with that. So, Gradually, many people will move away. Estates will form coalitions and then put a solar farm nearby, and that solar farm will support them and continue to give them. People will have their own. Many companies currently run on their own captive generation. They don't stay on the grid because they, they know the grid is only liable, it can collapse at any time and spoil their manufacturing. So, gradually, the grid will now totally be a backup in such states or country where they don't allow meritocracy, where they don't allow power system to flourish or to, to operate the way it should be, where they don't have meters for consumers, where they run estimated billings for years, and the estimated billing is estimated darkness, and uh, everything is just going upside down. I'm just curious, uh, was it that uh, the law didn't cover or provide for people who wanted to establish uh, uh, solar farms before now? Because if you're saying it is at that time that uh, maybe estates will be thinking about solar farms, is it that now it is not possible or, or before now it was not possible by law? Before now it was not uh, uh, possible. But because of this Electricity Act signed into law on June 9, 2023 by President Bola Medjinu, 
this has now been more possible is made more possible and easily uh, because it is now backed by law that states can have uh, uh, their own generation and individuals can now also uh, easily and legally put solar farms or put solar panels on their roof and even sell the excess through feeding tariff to the grid. So this is by way of developing the power system. This is by way of developing competition in the power system and except the governors, except the governors take the bull by the horn to implement the electricity uh, uh, market. This is going nowhere. So first, people should stop actually talking about federal. They should be asking their governors, why are you not taking advantage of electricity act? What is our state doing? That should be the thing on the, on the lips of Nigeria. Mr. Governor of my state, why are we not having our state electricity uh, commission? Why are we not having our own state grid? That's the question we should be asking. Enough of asking the federal government or presidency or ministry, federal ministry about this. It's the governors of your state that we should be asking them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have a final advice, if you were to have the ears of the individual governors or the president at this point regarding power, what would you say? I would say meritocracy is the number one requirement for power systems to be functional. Second, I will say, get your ass together, pass your state electricity law, and then establish your state electricity regulatory commission, and every other thing will follow, but apply meritocracy all the way in the process. Okay. So thank you so much, Dr. Oyebanjo, for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts. We hope that the, those who need to listen are listening right now, or at least it will get to them someday and they do the needful. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yes. We've been talking to Dr. Idowu Oyebanjo, MD, Idfon Power Engineering Consultants, IPEC Limited. And uh, we've been looking at uh, the power grid that collapsed and we were trying to proffer some solutions to it. And the bottom line is meritocracy in that sector so that the right people will bring the right policies and bring the right ideas for this uh, sector to flourish. We will take a break and when we return, we'll be analyzing Tinubu's economic reforms. Stay with us.